Hello and welcome to my new video. My name is Katja and this time I'm weaving myself a shawl. I think most Finnish homes have warm wool blankets draped over the couch to wrap oneself in in the evening. In the 19th century, however, wool shawls that closely resemble these were everyday garments women threw on their shoulders when they went out without a coat. A while ago I bought myself this book called Salit. This book is dedicated to Finnish shawls and it is based on the large textile collection of Wetterhof Foundation in Hamelinna, where Fredrika Wetterhof founded a school for impoverished girls in 1885. The purpose of the school was to help poor girls learn crafts that would help them to earn their own income. The girls were taught useful crafts and soon weaving became the most important of them. The shawls in this book vary. Most of them are either striped or checked. Twill seems to be the most popular type of weave followed by plain weave. As these shawls are supposed to be working as an outer garment or a blanket, they are pretty large. Most of them are squares with widths ranging from 130 to 150 centimeters. I had plenty of colors stocked and I chose to use warm reds, browns and oranges with a bit of mustard added in. I actually thought I had lots and lots of black yarn, but comparing the balls showed me that some of the balls that I thought were black were dark brown instead. So I decided to leave the black and use dark brown as I had yet another skein in storage. Wetterhof Foundation archives had plenty of old designs carefully painted with watercolors. However, here I'm ready to use all the modern help I can get and design my weaving with a computer. Weaving software is expensive though. Luckily, this software called Bronze lets me to try out designing. I can't save, but I can take a screen capture of the final result that I can then use to make my warp. I first made some sort of sketch where I concentrated on the general feel of the shawl and I didn't worry about the exact widths of the stripes. At the same time I had to take into account that I had a limited amount of yarn. Then, when I was happy with the sketch, I cleaned out the design. This software allows me to also experiment with different weaves, but this time I wanted to make a super simple plain weave. My yarn thickness in Tex was 2 times 125, which means that 1000 meters of yarn weight 250 grams. From old experience, I knew that 6 yarns per centimeter was a good warp density for this yarn. I wanted to make a big rectangular shawl that was about 140 centimeters wide. So, how long should my warp be and how to make a big shawl with a small loom? Well, historically the weavers had the same problem and they usually wove the shawl in two parts. So let's split our shawl in half. The pattern is symmetric, so we can use the same warp if we just turn the other half around. To make a fringe out of the warp, I needed to leave room between two halves of the shawl. 30 centimeters would do it. At the beginning, I needed room to tie my warp to the loom. These ties could be then used as a fringe, as long as they were long enough. The end part needed a bit extra besides the ties, as the weaving itself needs some room. I couldn't possibly weave all the way to the end of the warp, so I needed to add 50 centimeters extra. Calculating all this together gives 380 centimeters to my warp length. Then it was time to make the warp. My old warping frame worked just fine for this, as long as I divided my warp in several parts. Meet my smaller loom. You have seen my big loom that is now in storage. But this one is the first loom I had and I actually have used it just once. So it's time for me to start using it again. It's sort of portable. I can lift it up and even carry it, but it weighs like 30 kilos. So it's not really portable. <laughs> But it is very handy because it's, it can be folded into this small space and that's why I can actually store it in the house and I don't have to take it to the cellar. So, let's put this back into working order.
now just tighten up some screws and this will be in working order. Now my loom is looking at the loom and I tightened all the screws so it doesn't wobble all the time. I need to start actually putting my yarns into the loom. I have my warp here. It's in uh, five parts and I have to put all of these the loom in right order but I have this very very handy book unfortunately it's only available in Finnish but if you are a Finnish speaker this Kankaan rakentajan opas is the book to get if you want to learn how to build the warp to your loom because it has everything you ever wanted to learn about this thing and if you just follow the instructions, you can't go wrong. Except with this loom, because this loom has threadles coming from different sides from a regular loom, which means that down there everything has to be mirrored to what it should be. But I know how to do it. But first, we need to do a little bit adjustments to this. And take this and turn it upside down. And now we take our comb, which is really, really beautiful work of art. Just a piece of wood and lots of nails. And this should fit right here, like so. Just tie it here so it stays in place. I don't want it to fall down just when I'm finishing with my warp. Here is my plan. So now I need to put these two here in the right order. Now let's put the warp into the loom. The first thing is to divide the warp evenly into this rattle here. This makes sure that the warp will be straight and evenly wrapped onto the warp roller. Now would be a good idea to use some child labor, but my kids seem too busy to help me. So I decided to try to wrap my warp onto the warp roller alone. I hold the warp braid tightly in my right hand and turn the handle with my left. Now I start inserting warp sticks. These prevent the yarn sinking into the warp layers below and help to maintain an even tension throughout the warp width. Now the rolling is complete and I lift the warp up in order to thread the heddles. These sticks on both sides of my cross will help me to keep the warp in order. That is the name of the game. Keep everything in good order. Then I need to thread the heddles.
Trading heddles wasn't enough. Now each of those warp yarns must go through the reed cum. Finally, I can tie the end of the warp to the front. Then I even out the warp by threading in this cord, like this. Now we have to attach the treadle cords. Plain weave is the simplest weave, and it uses only two treadles. Now I need to fill my shuttles before I can start weaving. Let's weave. When weaving, one opens a shed by pressing a thread. The shuttle with the weft thread is thrown through the shed and then the yarn is beaten down with the beater. It takes some practice to learn to keep the right tension. I first used way too much force, as my previous weaving work was super dense. Now I had to learn to use less force. Once in a while one needs to stop and move the warp. I used a stretcher to keep the width even. Now, you remember that I am weaving the shawl in two parts. Now it is time to start the second half. I need to leave room to make fringes for both halves, so I fill the area in between with sturdy brown paper. I then add a few rows of waste yarn before starting the second half.
I ran out of yarn in the middle of weaving. I had just a few centimeters to go, but I don't have enough orange or probably red. So here I am in Helsinki, parked in a bunker, and I'm going to visit some yarn shops and I hope that I can find matching yarn. I did mention I parked in a bunker. This parking garage used to be a World War II bomb shelter. Although, now that I think of it, most of the parking garages in Helsinki area are bomb shelters. Most of them are just more modern and have never been used in wartime, unlike this one. what I was after so let's go to another and perhaps we can shop on the way there was this nice antique shop I've never visited and it was open Now we are getting somewhere. I can finally finish my weaving. I think this is ready. I must double check by taking out the fabric. I'll first weave some waste yarn here so that I know that this isn't unraveling. But there's like 50 centimeters of the warp left, which is something that I expected. And yeah, I had enough red yarn. Okay, I don't have enough for the fringe. But that's why I bought more red yarn. But I was happy that I didn't have to start the new colorway because it would have looked a little bit different. So, let's add the waste yarn.
very much. Yes. And now we can open these knots here. Let's separate the halves. I left some of the yarn ends unfinished while weaving because I think that weaving them in with a needle looks better if you have narrow stripes. Then I sew the two halves together. I remove the waist yarn and tie the ends into a nice little fringe. After this, I soaked the shawl thoroughly in water and left it to dry. While the shawl was drying, I had plenty of time to cut more yarns for the fringes. For the two remaining edges, I take three strands of yarn and fold them in half. I then use my crochet hook to attach the yarns to the edge. To finish the shawl, I will brush the surface 
Whatever brush that has hard bristles will work. Brushing softens the surface and gives it a nice fuzz. The effect is subtle. Here is the surface before brushing. And here it is after. Thank you for watching! Have you already subscribed to my channel? I have almost 5000 subscribers so help me to reach it by sharing this video and my channel with your friends. And comment down below what kinds of videos you like the best. See you soon! Bye!